Welcome back to Just Chatting, and this is the series of videos we do on Thursday and Sunday evenings just for our own entertainment. So, in case you haven't noticed, Audie is here with me. He hasn't been doing well the last few days. Audie is a people cat, and consequently, if my mood is down, his mood is down. So it's just the way it is. And <clears throat> we're going to have to see if we can get through this video in spite of it. I have to confess, I'm not really ready for this right now. Um, and that is because over the years, um, I have spent a lot of time studying the British royal family but from an historical perspective. I can tell you more than you ever wanted to know about the Danish kings, about the various Plantagenets and what they did to each other. I know all about the Tudor intrigues. But the modern royal family, no. My interest pretty much fell with Queen Mary, um, the grandmother of the late queen, although it did pick up again with Edward and Wallace back in the 1930s. But in terms of the royal family today, no, no. My interest was never really in that arena until I started taking a look at the antics of Nutmeg and the Ginger Sock Puppet. And you can't view their foolishness outside the context of the royal family. And as a consequence, I really had to look a lot uh, at who the players were, what, if anything, they were contributing to the nightmare that has been the last four years. And over that time, I developed a great appreciation for Elizabeth II. Um, she was a woman who, if she had to choose, would have chosen to simply be a wife and mother. That would have been her choice of a simple life. She always said that she was her happiest during the brief period when she and Philip were first married before she took the throne, when she was just a simple officer's wife. Well, she didn't get that choice, and frankly, she stood up to the responsibilities. She didn't back away. And it was a great, great loss when she passed. Personally, I had always hoped she would outlast her mother, and her mother lived to be over a hundred. So I figured, oh, she got a good four or five years left in her, not to worry. And when a Thursday rolled around, and I do my videos the same day they are aired, because we're talking current events, and things get stale very quickly. So the clock was ticking, the palace was issuing cautions, but frankly, it took me quite by surprise. So, um, oh, by the way, that 90-second narration on my last video, that took me an, over an hour to make because I realized after having looked at who she is, who she became, even though it wasn't who she wanted to be, I realized what a great loss it was. So we do, however, have to plow forward. And I think there's not a soul on the planet who would disagree with me when I say, Getting up the next morning and doing the job is exactly what she would have done. So we're going to have to continue. Um, today, I thought we would talk 
about what's next for Nutmeg and the Ginger Sock Puppet. So, when we come back, So let's start with the obvious. We just look at the numbers. The Ginger Sock Puppet is no longer sixth in line for the throne. He is now fifth. But I am remembering not too long ago when Princess Anne's firstborn child came into the world. It was uh, Peter Phillips. He was fifth in line for the throne. I believe he is something like 17th now. So, does it make a difference? No, no. Peter Phillips is just like Mr. Phillips, and that's the end of it. At that point, when you are that far down the line, it really does take an absolute catastrophe to put you on the throne. Yeah, and I'm talking a white ship level disaster. Can we have that in the 21st century? Well, yes. I mean, we live under the threat of nuclear war. Is it likely? No. No. I think that in terms of our perceptions of the Ginger Sock Puppet as being far removed from the throne, nothing has changed. William will follow his father, and God forbid if anything happens to William, he has three children who are next in line. And Harry has made quite a point of announcing to the world that his home is now the United States, which, by the way, is going to be a major problem for him come tax time, because, in fact, there have been so many public statements made not just by him, but by family, by other people speaking on his behalf, that there is no possibility of him denying at this point that he is domiciled in the United States. Now, that has tax implications, but that also has serious implications regarding counselor of state. Now, at the time of the Queen's passing, two of the councillors of state were, well, Andrew was one. He is in disgrace. Harry was another, and he is off in another country. So is Charles going to have to address this? Absolutely. There is no question about that. Are there options? Oh my, yes. Um, given the fact that a councillor of state is a person who serves on a council, as implied, there is no one person who would have uh, a, a disproportionate voice. So, even if they left Andrew on as counselor of state, would it be possible for the royal family to be in the hands of a disgraced person who has been accused of some very serious sexual misconduct. No, no. It's one voice out of many. Is it absolutely necessary? Well, yes, because even though any one counselor of state is just one voice in the crowd, by the time you get two of them who are not considered trustworthy by the British people, then you've got a problem. So, will Charles have to deal with it? Of course. Are there other people available? Edward. Edward is available. He would be an excellent choice. And uh, I believe Anne is already a counselor of state. But we've got Anne, we've got Sophie, we've got Catherine, we've got three very, 
very strong, well-regarded women. Not to mention the fact that we have William and in 10 years, George will be available. So will Charles deal with it? I'm sure he will. Uh, and I think that is the number one issue that is probably on people's minds because when the sock puppet jumps up to the next rung, it starts to look like his position has improved. No, no. He is no longer in that direct line of succession, father to son, father to daughter, whatever, because the British finally got wise and left the possibility of a, a female child with younger brothers taking the throne, which was smart of them, took them long enough. They've always done well when they have been in the hands of queens, and I guess they finally figured that out. In, in Harry's case, it's irrelevant. Yeah, it's a number, but that's all it is, just a number. So next up, are the putative children going to be prince and princess? Who knows? I've read through the, um, the law, I guess it's a law, uh, that was enacted by George V. And it appears to me that it is automatic. However, I have read a number of recent commentaries, because circumstances have changed, that have suggested this is within Charles' gift. So I don't know. I am far from an expert on British law. Certainly, as you know, because I've said this many times, I'm not an attorney. If the title prince or princess for the monarch's grandchildren is within Charles' gift. I feel it's very unlikely the children will get those titles. The reason for this is Charles has been saying for a long time he wishes to streamline the monarchy. And if he is not willing to apply this principle to his own second son, who is out of the immediate line of succession, He's going to look very much like a hypocrite. And Charles doesn't like looking bad. He doesn't like when people don't like, he wants to be loved. He really does. It's unfortunate because he's just not all that lovable, but it's his goal. So will he enforce his streamlined monarchy and deny the children titles? If it is within his power, yes. And this would have absolutely nothing to do with race, even though everybody knows Nutmeg and Ginger are going to play the race card if this happens. It's nothing to do with race. This is simply the direction the monarchy has been taking for a long time. And to eliminate the putative children who are being raised as Americans. And even if the children were pushed back into British society under whatever circumstances, they are still going to have one foot in the United States. They are still going to be uh, eligible for, for dual citizenship because of an American mother. Certainly, the Lilibet child was born here. Overall, is it a good idea to keep what would now be foreign princelings in the line of succession? No, I don't think so. Removing them from the line of succession, I think, is beyond Charles's abilities. But denying titles, yeah, that is easily within his grasp. And who knows? I guess we'll have to see how that plays out. 
for my part, and I'm sure I'm going to surprise the daylights out of you all with this, I hope they do get the titles. If the putative children get the titles, that means Nutmeg will not only get everything she's wanted from the British royal family, but it gives her nothing left to aspire to. There will be nothing left for her to take from them. And what does that mean? That means she'll be off to greener pastures because once she's gotten it all, you know, and remember that Veruca Salt analogy that I pulled out last week, I still think that holds. She does want it all. Once she's got it all, she's going to have to look elsewhere. There will be nothing left for her to gain. Now, there is no way that the ginger sock puppet is ever going to be king. Really, there isn't. I'm, the, the kind of disaster that would be necessary for that is utterly unthinkable. And Lord, there's a special place in hell for anybody wishing for the demise of the tiny little Cambridge children who are just adorable. I, I can't even imagine how anybody could, could put that notion in their heads, but I know it's been there. No, that is so unlikely. And at this point, with Charles on the throne, it seems that security is going to make sure the entire family will not be traveling together on planes, trains, buses, or motor scooters. Steps will be taken to ensure that a disaster like that couldn't happen. So where does that leave Nutmeg? Well, we all know where that leaves her. That leaves her with the ginger sock puppet. And I gotta say, that's pretty high on my fate worse than death list. If there's nothing more she can gain from the relationship, maybe she'll think it's time for her to go. Now, personally, I believe if she was smart, she would go while the getting is good. She really would. Because when there is talk of removing the titles, all she needs to do is divorce Harry. The talk about removing the titles will stop cold because Harry has lost popularity in the UK. But I don't think people are coming after him with shovels and pitchforks, screaming, burn, burn. No. The British people are remarkably forgiving. They really are remarkably forgiving people. If Harry came scurrying home, minus the missus, would people take him back? Well, yeah. I mean, Andrew's still there, right? And Harry has shown very poor judgment, but not Andrew-level poor judgment. I think once the problem was solved, Harry could eventually slide back into his home country without much fuss or muss. So if I were Nutmeg, I'd file for divorce tomorrow. I'd be able to walk away knowing that my kids would get those titles that I would get to be Duchess of Sussex for the rest of my life, no one would take the Sussex titles away. All the talk would stop. It would have to stop. The problem would be gone, thereby completely negating the issues that are bringing about this talk in the first place. And, of course, even though the title Duchess of Sussex is meaningless in the United States. It sure hasn't stopped her from using it. Will she continue to use it? Of course. And then Harry would go back and everything would be ducky. But of course, she's not going to listen to me because she believes she's the smartest person in the room. And it doesn't matter. You could throw her in a room with Einstein and she's still going to believe that. Now, the fact is, 
that on my worst day, I'm with a head cold and a hangover, I could think circles around that woman on her best day. And I'm telling you, I'm not the smartest person in the room. You know, no way. Believe me, I have been in plenty of rooms where there have been people a whole lot smarter than me. So she needs to wise up to the fact that she's not. She's been lucky. She's been crafty. She has a kind of intelligence rather like my cat's. And my cat cannot read and write. I, I don't listen to him. He will tell you he can. He's lying. My cat can go out and catch a mouse while he is wearing two bells and a red, white, and blue flashing light around his collar. So, yeah, he's not incapable. She's got the same kind of intelligence. She knows how to sight her prey, trap it, snag it with that claw of death, and carry it home. She's done that. She's done very well for herself, frankly. If you want to be objective about it, who would have thought she'd have come this far? She really doesn't have anything to justify the heights she has achieved. Nothing. But she's done it. So good for her. But I do think this is about the point where she needs to start considering whether or not it's time for her to get out of the royal family, leave these people alone for a change. Lord knows a person with a conscience would be compelled to do it, realizing that she's caused more than enough trouble already. And in fact, she's caused trouble. There's no question about it. Her entry into that family has been nothing but a disaster for them. She has to know this. So how she can determine that she is not responsible is beyond me. But I, I'm, I'm sure she will. The fact is that it would be a good time for her to walk away. This would be the convenient time to divorce Harry, take the little prince and princess, who presumably she can merchandise the daylights out of once they get those titles, and go on and just have a happy little life, you know, surrounded by gold coins or whatever it is that makes her happy. So if I were in a position to give her advice, that's the advice I would give her. Cut and run now. You've gotten everything you can get. There's nothing more for you here. So take what you've got and go away. You're never going to be the Princess of Wales. Uh, yeah, she picked the wrong brother. That is the reality. Uh, I'm pretty sure she knows that. We've seen the pictures to prove it. And in fact, looks like William's caught on to that too. So the fact is, it's time for her to move on. Will she do it? I don't know. It would be the smart move, which makes me think, no, she won't. Because even though, as I say, she's succeeded beyond what any of us would have reasonably expected, she still is not thinking in terms of the big picture. I don't think she's capable of it. I think her personal needs because of the personality disorders, are clouding her and making it impossible for her to see her own best interests. And her own best interests are to cut and run now. So, do I want to see those kids get titles? You bet I do. Because that would mean the removal of Nutmeg from the British royal family. And... I'm sure I am not alone when I say I, I harbor some resentment at this point. I believe that if the Queen had had a couple of good years instead of the bad years she's had, much of which can be laid right at Nutmeg's doorstep, I think she might well still be with us. So. Would I like to see her out of that family? Yes. I would say it's too little too late, but still better 
late than never. So it's time for her to grab the titles and leave before she gets kicked out of the party. All right, that is what I have for you today. I'm sure as you've noticed, a lot of this is colored by my concerns about the unfortunate situation the Queen had to deal with in the last couple of years of her life. So a little bit of this is vent, a little bit of this is rant. But I will get past this. I will. All right, that's what I have for you today. I am showing another slideshow of the Queen. I am going to continue showing slideshows of the Queen going out on our videos at least until I feel I'm okay to walk away. My personal mourning period is over, and I don't know when that's going to be. But enjoy. These are my favorite pictures of the Queen, and it's, it's the way I want to remember her. So, I will see you all next week. Have a terrific day.